Awesome. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is another session. This is part uh, three of the keys for revival. So uh, we already covered two parts. Uh, which was repentance and also humility. So we, let's start off, and then we're going to our third part, um, which will be prayer. So let me start off with our uh, launch verse as usual, the, 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 ver the main verse in context of what we're dealing with here. And 2 Chronicles 7.14. So you all can turn with me here. And uh, let me find my spot. Uh, bear with me. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Seven fourteen. Okay, I'm almost there. Bear with me. All right, I have my spot, but uh, okay. So um, this is what the Lord was saying, right? And this is like we like we've covered before. This is a verse that is a key. To revival, a lot of people throughout uh, the history of the church has uh, pr uh, pr uh, used this verse and referenced this verse for revival. Um, so let me start off by reading this scripture now, just to give us a foundation as always. Um, so here we go. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend to the prayer that is made in this place. This is a promise of God. And as we see, there's four things here that's uh, mentioned. There is prayer. Uh, there's humility. Um, you know, God is calling all of us to these things. Um, you know, there's also seeking his face and then there's repentance. So like I said, we covered repentance. We also covered humility on some past messages. And now we're going to go into uh, prayer today. So these are the four keys that God has given us. And there's so many other keys. There's like covenant. Um, there's the fear of the Lord and different things, which I'll be covering on some other messages. All right. So let's, let's dive right in um, for the sake of time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we're going to get into prayer here. So uh, as you know, this is this is all connects and the Holy Spirit is connecting everything because in revival, as you've seen throughout history, um, repentance is usually like the fear of the Lord and repentance is usually what really launches and really sets fire to a revival is repentance and surrender um, and also humility, you know, a, a, a heart that's rightfully prostrate, prostrated before the Lord, right? And humility and lowliness and meekness, which is what, what I talked about. Go back and check the other sermons. I talked about those things more deeply, but these are the keys. As I said, the keys for revival, OK, because it's repentance where people turn from their ways and repentance. I want to make this clear. I'm not trying to make this like a legalistic thing, but repentance is is basically, you know, changing your mind. Right. It's turning. That's what repentance is. It's turning your direction or changing your mind, uh, turning from your old ways and accepting the ways of the Lord. That's what repentance is. So repentance is really a mindset more so than an action. Um, you know, you, you think on the things of the Lord, you renew your mind. Amen. And that's, what's very critical and, uh, and very important. So as you know, what a man think of, so he shall be. So when a man thinks on the ways of the Lord, even if he's struggling, right? Cause we all struggle in some ways, even if somebody, that's why you come to the Lord as you are. So even if somebody's struggling, um, even if someone's still in their sins, there's still some things that they're working through and struggling through. Um, amen. Praise God. He is faithful. You can still come to him and um, just, but your mind is changed. Your mind is renewed. Your mind is going a different direction. And that's true repentance of saying, let me turn around. Let me think differently. And as you think differently, your actions will follow. Amen. So that's repentance and it's humility to know that God is God. We are human, right? I mean, that's the basics of humility that we don't know better than God. Amen. And then once we come to these, these, these are the foundations because in prayer you need repentance and you need humility as a foundation for prayer because the Bible says that, you know, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God does not listen to the wicked. Right. Um, and if you're prideful and you think you know more than God and you want to question God, you want to, uh, bring an indictment to God and blame him for everything, then that's a bad attitude to come in prayer. Right. That has to get worked out first for God to really respond and for God to really hear you. Amen. So that's just a foundational statement here. 
So let's go to our first part, which I'm going to start off with. Uh, so we're doing, there's four different prayers we're going to focus on. There's the prayer of intimacy. All right. There's the, there's the prayer that never gives up. Amen. Um, there's also the, the father's prayer, the prayer for the gifts of the spirit. And there's also uh, yeah, the prayer never quits. Covered that one. And there's also the prayer of intercession. So these are the four things um, I'll be covering. Uh, you know, prayers for the gifts of the father, prayer of the intercession, a prayer that never gives up, and also a prayer of intimacy. So I'm gonna start with prayer of intimacy. That's another thing. You can't really come in into see true intimacy with God without repenting, turning from your uh, turning from sin, or having a different mindset, right? Because like I said, you come to God as you are. It's not legalistic. Change your mindset. Understand Understand that God is God. We are human and that we need him, right? The necessity of God and it also ties into humility. And then we can come into intimacy with God because, like I said before, God resists the proud but gives grace uh, to the humble. So on intimacy, right? And this is a prayer, like I said before, even in our struggles, we can come to God for intimacy, right? Amen. Because our mind is being changed. Our mind is being renewed. We're slowly making progress. Uh, even a little bit of progress goes a long way with God. He takes a mustard seed. Amen. Um, he can use a mustard seed and, and, and do great things, right? I mean, he can, he, he can, he can take just a little bit and do so much with it. God don't need a lot to work with. So we just, you know, come to God as you are and he'll work with you. Amen. So there's intimacy. Right. And nothing is with intimacy with God. We, ha we have to understand that prayer is not a monologue, but it is a dialogue. OK, it's a dialogue, a conversation between two people. Right. So when we're in prayer, it's important to understand that we got to give God some time to talk. Amen. I mean, and God can speak to us through the word. Um, he can speak to us through the small, still voice like he did with Elijah. Some people hear him audibly. Sometimes um, God can speak in so many ways um, to, to divine inclinations. Um, he can give you thoughts, different things. There's so many different ways that God speaks to people. We're all different. We're all unique in different ways. So God speaks to us in different ways where we can understand it. We all have our personal relationship with God. Amen. So he'll talk to us in a way that we understand. He'll give us signs. He'll give us things that uh to see and to point out so that we can understand so god is going to respond to your prayer amen so when we pray it's not just laying down a laundry list of things that we need to get done and giving god our list of errands spiritual errands and and all you know life problems and all our needs and necessities the bible said god already knows what we need before we even ask right so he already knows these things so when god wants intimacy he wants that relationship. Amen. He wants that conversation. He wants that bond. Amen. He wants to come closer to you. He wants you to know your he wants us to know his heart like he knows our heart. You know, he wants us to know him more. And that's the that's the pursuit of seeking God is to know him. Right. Um, and that's the will of God. Amen. Amen. So uh, the Bible also says, you know, if you draw close to God, he will draw near to you. That is a promise. So no matter where you're at, like I said, as you're in, the, as you're in the mindset of repentance and changing your ways and, and basically doing a detour, doing a U-turn in your mindset and then you're, and then you're, uh, as you're doing a U-turn in your mindset, your behaviors and your behavior patterns will follow suit. And as you change your mind, like, like I said, as a man think of, so it shall be. Eventually, you will slowly get free and get delivered. Some things uh, takes a process is a process. Amen. But we come we can still draw closer to God, even in the midst of our struggles. We can come closer to God, even in the midst of our failures. We can come closer to God in the midst of addiction, whatever the case may be. And he will draw close to us. Amen. As we seek him out, he's already seeking us out. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So that's a promise from God. It's a, such an amazing thing with prayer that as we seek God in prayer, God will slowly draw to us. I mean, God wants a relationship with us more than we want with him. You know, God loved us first. Right. He gave his own son to show how much he, when we were yet sinners, when we were rebellious, when we didn't care about God. He gave the greatest gift he could ever give his own precious son. Amen. Give God glory for that. Right. So and then, you know, uh, we need to step into the prayer closet. Amen. Jesus talks about the prayer closet. This is a secret place. You know, we, the Bible talks about seeking the Lord in a secret place. 
So when Jesus says, when you pray, go in your closet and pray in secret and the father hears you in secret and he will reward you openly. Um, People will be able to see the signs of you in intimate relationship with Jesus. They'll see it in your behavior and your and your choice of words and your patience and the nine gifts of the spirit and the supernatural gifts moving through you, different things. People will see the evidence. I mean, the love, you know, they would know us by our love. Our love will 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 uh, exude. Right. Our love will radiate from our spirit, from our actions. You know, that's the greatest testimony. That's the greatest witness um, is our actions, you know, doing good. And as we do good, people will praise God for the good that we are doing. So we go into the prayer closet, pray in secret, and then God will be able to do a work in us. Amen. He'll be able to do a sanctification. Amen. He wants us to be set apart. He wants us to himself. He's a jealous guy. So we go into our prayer closet. We go into our secret place and we talk to God in private. And uh, he knows us more than we know ourselves. He knows us more than anybody else. So we can openly tell God everything. We can openly lay bare our heart. God already knows what we're thinking. He already knows in our hearts. So we lay it all bare before him. He wants that. Right. You know, as it says, draw near to him, he will draw near to us. He wants us to lay it all out for him. Amen. Lay it all out. Right. There's no point of keeping anything secret with God because he knows all things. He sees all things and uh, he, he wants a relationship. And he showed that by giving his life for a relationship with us. Amen. He gave his blood, shed his blood and died so that we could be close to him. That's how much he cares for us and loves us. So we got to be in our prayer closet. We got to find prayer time. Um, and you know, in the morning or a quiet time, whenever it's quiet for the babies get up before the day gets going with all the busyness and, and all the responsibilities or at night, you know, early in the morning or, or at night, just find some time, uh, to really step aside and, 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 and talk to God um, without any distractions or any hindrances. Amen. So on intimacy, I'm just going to uh, read a couple of scriptures here. In Jeremiah 29, 12, it reads here. Uh, um, let me adjust this. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 12, it states, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, you shall go and pray to me, and I will hearken to you. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. So look at that. We're talking about the keys for revival and prayer. And God is saying that his thoughts and intentions for us is already of good. His intentions for us is already to, to bless us and to do us well. Even, even, you know, the Bible says that even the bad things are, are meant for the good. You know, all things are meant for the good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes. So all things are meant for good. That means that God's thoughts and his intentions for us is always for the good. Amen. Even when we go through struggles, even when we go through failures, even when we go through unfair situations, which we all have to go through in a sinful fallen world, God's thoughts are still good. God's thoughts are still to prosper us and not harm us. Let's praise God for that. Amen. How encouraging is that? The thoughts of God that he has towards us is, is for good and not of bad. And he says that, you know, that he wants us to call upon him, pray to him, and he will hearken. He will listen. And like I said before, it's a dialogue and a monologue. So, and so these scriptures I'm showing now is showing that through scripture, that when God hears us and God will respond, right? Because if he hears you, and we see it all through scriptures, when the Bible says he heard, he responds, right? So if God is not hearing you, he's not going to respond. Like he doesn't hear the prayers of the wicked and then he don't respond to them, but he will respond to us and he will respond in kind. He will do his will and do what's best for us because his thoughts are always for good. Yeah, praise God for that. So, so we got Jeremiah 29, 12. Now in Psalms 102, 17, it says he will respond to the prayer of the destitute. He will not despise their plea. So praise God for that, that, you know, he will respond. So that's why it's a dialogue. So when we pray, we need to, we need to sit still and listen, quiet our spirit, quiet our soul and, and, and listen for the Lord, listen for his response, listen for his instruction, his encouragement. Also, it's important because the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible and, you know, it's God breathed. So it's important. We want revelation, divine revelation. And we want to have understanding uh, and get keys from the word of God. 
um, and get practical wisdom from the Word of God, we need to listen, right? We need to not just read the Bible to skim through it uh, just to do like a uh, ritual, like a religious activity, but to really get intimacy with God and to know him more through his word. Amen. And as we know him more through his word, then we would know him more in prayer as well as the Holy Spirit gives us revelation and gives us understanding. Right. So we need to quiet ourselves, still our hearts, be still and know that he is God in prayer in the midst of the weights and the burdens on your life. Be still and know that he is God when you're under attack from the enemy, when you're attacked and tried and tested. Be still and know that he is God. Get to your prayer closet. Get to your secret place. Hallelujah. And understand that he is God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen for the Lord. Listen for his still voice. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Listen. Quiet yourself. Hush up. Hallelujah. And hear God speak to you. Praise God. So it's a dialogue, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a dialogue. I will emphasize that. So when you pray, listen, you know, quiet yourself. Let God speak to you. Amen. In the way that he prefers to speak to you. Psalms 191. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give relief from my distress have mercy on me and hear my prayer. So now we he's seeing his Psalms. Answer me, right? How does it, how does God answer? All right? Like as I said, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. So he will answer with his voice. He will answer with his word. He will answer in scripture, right? He will answer in prayer requests and 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 our needs are being met. He knows our needs before we ask for. He will he will answer us. When we cry out and call out to him in distress, he will give us comfort by his Holy Spirit. He'll give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen. He'll give us a faith. Amen. Hallelujah. A faith that can withstand and stand firm and stand in the midst of the trials and the testings and the distress. These scriptures are saying, God, respond when I'm in distress. You know, hear my plea, O oh God. Hear my petition, O oh Lord. And God will hear. Amen. And that's the intimacy, needing God, humility, clinging and depending on Jesus. His yoke is easy, his burden is light, clinging to the Lord. Amen. And the Lord will answer us because it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. So God will answer. Even in the midst of your prayer closet, you will hear the Lord and he will answer you. Amen. Praise God. So make sure we're in prayer. We get in a quiet place, no distractions, have the word with us. And pray and meditate, listen to God, and uh, see what happens. It will be an, an amazing, amazing experience. Um, praise the Lord. So now the next part is uh, we're going to do prayer for uh, the Father's gifts. So I'm in Luke 11, 10, thir- uh, verses 10 through 13. Uh, this, here's a promise of the spiritual gifts. Amen. It says, for everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks finds, and to him that knocks it shall be open. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Or if she asks him an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that Ask him. So this is this is powerful. And we hear the word ask or request or make your request to the Lord. We know that's all in prayer. Right. So Jesus is saying and promising that. I mean, this is a really, really I mean, Jesus really emphasized um, how God will answer. Right. He's saying that even wicked fathers, wicked men know how to give gifts to their children, know how to give their, make sure their, their, their children's needs are met and all that. So with Jesus, so Jesus making an emphasis that the father, you know, he's righteous, he's good. You know, he, he has good thoughts towards, like, like we read in Jeremiah 29, his thoughts are to prosper us, not to harm us, right? To give us a future and an end, um, a, gr- a great end. You know, he wants us to have the victory. So of course he would want us to have the, the spiritual gifts. Of course, he because the Bible says seek after the spiritual gifts. God wants us to have them. And that's a key to revival. When we pray, you know, we pray and we seek uh, the, the spiritual gifts and, and, and to see it in more abundance and to see it to glorify God and to set the captives free. Amen. He came to set the captives free. Amen. And the spiritual gifts do that. Right. 
So, uh, you know, I find it very interesting uh, how Jesus used this analogy to emphasize the goodness of the of the father, how good he is. We have a good father. Amen. He will never reject us. He would never turn us away. He would never leave us nor forsake us. And he would certainly not turn us away when we're asking for the spiritual gifts, when we're seeking the full gospel, the fullness of the Holy Ghost. Amen. To be filled with the Holy Spirit and we're filled with the Holy Spirit. The gifts are there. Right. I mean, when the, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to move in the spiritual gifts. Amen. You're going to move in the prophetic. You're going to have words of knowledge. You're going to have words of wisdom. You're going to have discernment. You're going to you're going to have authority over the, uh, the, the demonic powers. You're going to have the power to heal the same Holy Spirit that came in Jesus, the same Holy Spirit that lives in us. The same Holy Spirit that raised him from the dead is the same Holy Spirit giving us life, quickening our mortal bodies, as the Bible says. Amen. So look at that. So, so Jesus said, how much more would a father not give the Holy Spirit for those who ask? So we ask in prayer and he will pour out the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He will bring an outpouring and we're in that we're in the end time revival and he will do it as we pray, as we ask, as we seek. Amen. So we need to pray for the gifts. Amen. And let me run to Acts four. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 4, amen, praise the Lord. Yeah, Acts 4, verses 24 to 31. Now the, now the context of this is that it was John and Peter, um, a man was healed, a lame man was healed, and they got persecuted right after that. You know, the Sad Sadducees, those sad, sad to seas, um, these Pharisees and, and these uh, legalistic lawyers of the law of God and all this stuff, these hypocrites, um, was persecuting um, John and Peter for a miracle. Can you believe it? Um, and uh, this is their response after they were persecuted and then threatened and let go. Here's their response. So I'm going to start at verse uh, 24. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God. Hallelujah. Lord, you are God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all, all that in them is. Who by the mouth of your servant David said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against your holy child Jesus, whom you have anointed with Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever your hand and your counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by preach by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the by the name of your holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Look at this. This is a huge key for prayer, right? A key for revival is prayer. And look at this right here. A key example after they were threatened, they were in distress, right? So they went to the Lord God Almighty, the Lord of heaven and earth. They gave him praise. They gave him glory. This was a prayer. This was a prayer. And when, and Jesus said uh, what, what the Lord said in uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 14, you know, if my people would, you know, humble themselves and, and pray, right? So here we go. They're praying right now, and they're praying for the gifts. Look at that. I heard some sensation and say, don't pray for the gifts. I mean, clearly it says right here, they're praying for God to stretch forth his hand and do more healing. They just saw a healing. They're asking for God to do more, right? They're asking for God to do signs and wonders, right? You know, so it is okay to seek signs and wonders when you're seeking them for the glory of God, when you're seeking them to glorify the name of Jesus, when you're seeking them to, for the name of Jesus to be proclaimed and, and for the gospel and the witness of the gospel to be validated, right? That God will stretch forth his hand to honor the gospel and to honor his word. Nothing wrong with that. So it's just, it's just, I find it very powerful, you know, that they prayed together. 
They cried out to God together. They were in distress. They, they sought God together. And look what God did. He shook the place supernaturally. And we know the end of that story. Plenty, many more signs and wonders and miracles after that. So we need to see this as a key for, for, for arrival in prayer that God is saying, pray, seek the gifts, ask for the gifts, you know, um, you know, and then look what it says. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And like we just read before in Luke 11, that Jesus says, if anyone asks for the spirit, of course, the father will give it. So they will be filled with the spirit. Right. Amen. Filled with the spirit. And then with being filled with the spirit comes the signs and the wonders and the miracles and the healing, of course. So so, you know, we need to pray and seek God for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, and be persistent in this, which will be the next topic. The last topic is to be persistent in prayer. Never give up. Be persistent in seeking the spiritual gifts. Be persistent in praying to God for the Holy Spirit to be filled with the Holy Spirit, um, to move in power and to move as a great witness uh, with God confirming his word along the way with signs, wonders, and healings. Amen. And the, the authority to cast out devils. Amen. That's the end time revival. Amen. So this is a key for revival. We need to pray. Cry out to God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And they spoke his word in boldness, too, just to we don't want to miss that. To be bold, you know, that's being filled with the Holy Spirit. To be bold in proclaiming his word, and then God confirms it. What, what an amazing thing to, to work with heaven, uh, to be co-workers of the, of the kingdom of God. Isn't that amazing to be teammates of, of heaven? Hallelujah. Teammates with the angels. Hallelujah. To, to preach with boldness, uh, to, 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 to proclaim the gospel, and then God confirms it with signs and wonders and miracles. What, what an amazing thing. So praise God. So they prayed for the gifts. They prayed for signs and wonders. They prayed for more healings. And God responded in kind. And God is a faithful and good God. And he respond, responded and filled them uh, with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So now the next one is the pray, the pray and never give up. Oh, just dropped a card. Uh, bear with me here. To pray and never give up, right? So this is in, and the last part will be intercession. Um, prayer, never give up. Uh, bear with me here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. So so the next one is a prayer that never quits, right? So uh, I'm going to share a quick story. So as some of you may know, uh, there's a church in Cumberland uh, that's been sitting uh, for a number of years. It was abandoned. So it's in bad shape. It's just been rotting away and needs so much work in the basement all through the church. And uh, I've been I've been working on this church, you know, doing whatever I can, trying to raise money. I know the church blessed me with some money, which we, which we used to get the uh, electric circuit board change and things like that. Um, and uh, just diff- so we got some electric work done with the money that was given. So that was a blessing. But so I've been doing so much. I mean, we marched around the church seven times uh, as the Holy Spirit told us, shouting and praying in tongues. We visited a church multiple times, this run down church, praying in the church, crying out to God, praying, you know, getting on the phone with our intercessors, praying, intercessors calling me to pray, intercessors meeting me at the church to pray. We prayed and prayed and prayed. And after a few years, not a real huge breakthrough like that. A few breakthroughs here and there, as I mentioned but not really enough money to really build the whole church. But praise God that recently I got a word, you know, I mean, excuse me, I got uh, news from the owner of the church, the investors, that the money is coming through. The government, the state is going to provide the money. Praise the Lord for that. Glory. Hallelujah. So there's finally a breakthrough. But I prayed and prayed and I was persistent. I kept praying. I kept crying out. Then I just gave it to God. I said, Lord, you know, you do it. You know, if it's your will, you'll pay the bill. God, you take care of it. I'm putting it in your hands, Lord. And then next, you know, I got a call. Great news. And now the money's going to be coming in. They're looking at getting a church fixed up. So praise the Lord. So this is an example of of persistent prayer, not giving up, trusting God, even in the midst of of, of there's like uh, doors being closed and so many disappointments and uh, just a delay in things and, and and almost looked like there was no hope at some point. So I was just going to give up like, well, maybe it's not God's will for me to preach this church and for me to lead this church. But I believe so that it is. And God is showing that because the money is coming in. Praise God. So that's a story of being persistent 
and prayer. You know, we need tenacious, persistent prayer. You know, we can't weary God in prayer. You know, God's children can't weary him. We can bug him and bug him and pester him uh, according to his will, of course, to, and, and revival is his will. You know, Joel, Joel chapter 2 clearly uh, says that God's going to bring an end-time revival, a great outpouring of his spirit on all flesh. So it's according to his word. And God said, it's the one thing we can test him on is his word. So we can come to him as children. Abba, Father, you, you said you would part your spirit. Abba, Father, you said you would do an end-time revival. And we can pester and, and be persistent and tenacious in our prayer. Amen. So, yeah, let me read chapter 18, starting at verse 1. This is a parable about persistent prayer. Uh, this is Jesus. He spoke a parable to them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, to pray and not give up, saying, there was a city, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she will weary me. See, notice this, this sinner, this man who doesn't care about God and doesn't have any compassion for humanity can be wearied, but God can't be because God is a God of love. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge says. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night to him, though he bear long with them? Right. So God is long suffering, right? He's going to bear long with us in prayer. Um, so like I said, he can't be wearied, right? He's long suffering. So if we cry out day and night for revival, see, here we go. A key, a key for revival. If we pray day and night and we get the intercession, that's the next part I'm going to get into is the importance of intercession. If we do this, it's a key. Right. That God will justly do what he has promised because lives need to be changed. People need their lives transformed. People need discipleship. People need deliverance. He came to set the captives free. Captives need to be set free. There's people still in bondage, people still in chains, even in the church, people that are demonized, demonically oppressed. So this is just to avenge us of our adversary, the devil, right? So God, please come and avenge us of our adversary. He's attacking, he's tormenting, he's oppressing. Please deliver us. If we cry out day and night, God will answer. We cannot weary him, amen? So we need to do persistent prayer like this persistent widow, right? Because he says on verse eight, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man comes, shall he find on earth faith shall he find faith on the earth shall he find faith on the earth so he's saying even after this about persistent prayer he's saying even so you know god will avenge speedily but even so will i find people with faith will they have enough faith to pray and never give up will they have enough faith to stand on god and stand on his word no matter what's happening no matter how they feel no matter what people are saying no matter what it says on the news will they stand in faith will they trust me says the lord will they have hope in me will they believe that i can do it that i can do all things that i will come through that i hear their prayers will they have faith hear the heart of jesus on this he wants us to be tenacious persistent with our prayers right he wants us to be undaunted you know he wants us to be not to be discouraged right don't be discouraged right says the lord in his word don't be discouraged Keep praying. Keep being persistent. Who has the faith that no matter how it looks, no matter how dark it gets, they pray, they cry out, they get more persistent, right? Like, avenge me, God, of my adversaries. Avenge me, God. Bring justice, God. You see what's happening. But he's, and the scripture says day and night. So we have to continue to do this and be persistent. And that's, that's an important thing, a prayer, a prayer that never gives up. And that's a key to revival. A prayer that never quits. What does it say? Quitters never win and, and winners never quit. Right? Quitters never win. Winners never quit. We win and we have the victory if we don't quit. Those who endure till the end shall be saved. But it clearly says they have to endure, persevere till the end. Right. So, of, of course, we'll be tried to make it to the end, but we got to make it through this race. This is not a race of speed. This is not a this is a race of endurance. This is an endurance race. This is a triathlon in the spirit. Amen. 
Um, so yeah, a, spir- a, sp- uh, a very important spiritual gift in this spiritual triathlon, hallelujah, is the spiritual discipline of prayer, right? Because we, you know, a lot of times we might not feel like praying. We might be crushed. We might be hurt, but God is saying, keep praying, right? And, he, and, and God doesn't despise, uh, what does it say in the word of God? Help me, Holy Ghost. That God, you know, that a, uh, that, that a contrite and broken heart, God does not despise. So if you're broken before the Lord, right? Most of us are broken people. Amen. If you're contrite. You feel bad for your sin. You might still be in bondage of sin, but you feel bad. You feel contrite. God will not despise you. Keep coming to him and being persistent like this widow here. And you will have justice. You will have vengeance. Vengeance of the Lord. He will repay against these devils torment you and, and, and demonizing your life and got the, got the demons hands on your finances, on your family, on your mind, on your soul, on your flesh, on your body, on your health. You know, cry out to God that he, he will avenge you speedily. Amen. So we need to be praying and praying and praying and not giving up. Now, the last part is prayer of intercession. Now, intercession is powerful. Now, there's a story I heard from a gentleman. He's an ex-warlock. You can go find him. His name's uh, James Ka- uh, Kawaya. That's K-A-W-A-L-Y-A. James uh, Kawaya. K-A-W-A-L-Y-A. And I'm sorry for if I mess up that pronunciation, but it's James Kawaya. K-A-M-A-L-Y-A. Um, you can find him on YouTube. His testimony, he has a three-hour testimony, very powerful. I think it has a, a, like millions of views right now. Very powerful. So I'm not going to get, for the sake of time, I'm not going to get um, all into that. Um, but uh, just a quick thing on this. He uh, has some intercessors, right? Intercessors are so important for the kingdom. Uh, I mean, ver- so much, imp- uh, very important, right? Uh, it's the key to revival is intercessors uh, for sure. Um, so he had a group of intercessors. They came into a covenant, a covenant to pray for 90 days. Um, and they had to pray uh, between, I believe it was between three and nine, I believe. So I think it was six hours a day. I could be wrong. You can go back and check his testimony, but, but I believe it was six hours a day and they fast and pray for 90 days every day. Right. And if they stopped, if they missed the day, they had to start all over. So they had a covenant of this and this, and, uh, James, the, the prophet James is sharing this and he was a warlock. He was an ex warlock, very powerful, high level warlock. who was dedicated as a child. I mean, a snake breast fed him for like when he was an infant. I mean, it's crazy. His mom couldn't even breastfed him. He was fed by a serpent. A python was wrapped around him when he was a baby. So, I mean, the story is mind blowing. You got to check it out. So he was a, a, I mean, he, he was a leader at like nine years old. He was like a high priest warlock at like nine. So the guy knows stuff, right? So long story short, they were trying to, uh, they knew about this group, these prayer warriors, these, these mighty intercessors that were praying in this covenant. Um, and uh, and uh, they knew they had to stop it because they said if they, if they didn't stop this covenant that they had set for 90 days, if they didn't disrupt this, then they, it would shut down demonic operations for 70 years and it would be like a 70 year revival. I mean, it's a true story. You can check it out. So this is a, so, so God is showing us the keys to revival. We talk about revival a lot. We want revival, revival. Well, these are the things he shows in second Chronicles seven fourteen. He's showing us those four things, those basic things. And, and, uh, he's showing us and I'm expounding on it. And, so that could, could have brought, I mean, of course, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the warlock and, and, and these dark priests and these devils, they were successful, unfortunately, in, in stopping and breaking up the operation. They brought in offenses. They brought in somebody from the outside. People got offended. People got in the flesh. People. So long story short, the prayer, um, the prayer covenant was broken. So then the, 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 the uh, demonic priest and, the, and these dark powers were able to uh, operate. Um, okay, so they weren't stopped and they weren't bound for 70 years. But if they would have been successful in this covenant prayer of intercession, they would have had it would have been a 70 year revival. The devil would have been chained. Right. He wouldn't have been able to stop this revival. Right. So that's the importance of intercessors. OK, so in Ephesians 6, 18, it says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind. Be alert and always keep uh, and always keep on praying for all the Lord's 
people. See, so intercession, we keep praying for all the Lord's people. I also says pray in the spirit. So it's praying in the tongues. So intercessors that, you know, pray in the spirit, pray in tongues. It's a powerful thing. A group of intercessors praying for something. God's going to hear. God is going to answer. We need more intercessors praying for revival, more intercessory groups praying for revival, coming in covenant prayers and and we'll see the outpouring come, right, in your area, in your region. We'll see it as we keep crying out to God, praying, fasting, covenant together. It will happen. You know, and it says in all occasions, right, pray in all occasions of, with all kinds of prayers, right? So pray for different things. Pray in the spirit, you know, pray in a group, pray by yourself, all kinds of ways, you know, um, you know, with your requests. And, um, you know, but keeping in mind and keep your mind alert, right? Stay sharp, stay sober, um, you know, and it says, keep praying and always keep praying for all the Lord's people. So, you know, we're praying without ceasing. We're, we're back to the persistent widow and the parable of the Lord, um, you know, praying persistently. It says, keep praying. So don't stop. Keep praying for the Lord's people, our intercessors. Keep praying, keep interceding for the Lord's people, especially for our, our pastors, like uh, Pastor Mike Yeager um, and the ministry team. Keep praying for them. Right. They need it. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm almost wrapped up here. You know, because like intercessors are used by intercessors are used by God like salt to preserve life. So basically, you know, the prayer a prophet told me at one of my jobs that um, that God spoke to him and told him that the prayers of my mother is what saved me, is what saved my life when I was in my demonic worship and drugs and all that. Nearly OD. God saved me. I don't have time to get into the whole testimony. But I should be dead right now. But it was from the prayers of my mother, right? It was the prayers of my father. It was the prayers of those who love me, that preserved me, that kept me from dying in my sin and going to hell. And I know there's plenty of people that can attest to this, of the prayers of their grandmother, the prayers of their mothers, their fathers, their family members, their loved ones, their friends, their church. The prayers of people, the intercessors, is where God hears and God takes action and God delivers his people. Amen? And God preserves them like salt, preserves their life from decay and death in the soul and in the body and the mind, the spirit and in the second death, which is hell. So the salt preserves from all of that. Right. So we need prayers. It's the prayers. Some of you have said, oh, it was the prayers of my mother, prayers of my father. Oh, it was the prayers of my grandmother. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people heard this. And it was those prayers that set me free. It's those prayers that brought me back to God. The prodigal son returned home from the prayers. Right. So intercession is so important. Um, and then the last thing I'll say, and I'm going to close here, uh, J J James 5.16, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, uh, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. See that? And I'll close there. The effectual righteous prayer, the intercession of righteous people, God's righteous people avails much. It does a lot, right? It does more than what we can imagine, like that mustard seed, right? Um, that can move the must seed of faith that can move mountains. Come on, that mustard seed that grows such a great tree, right? There's so much we can do, so many connections. Uh, you know, we uh, we are the branches, Jesus is the vine. Come on. So with intercession prayer and factual prayers that are righteous, I mean, it just it, it expands the branches, right? It expands the fruit. It it, it 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 grows the network of the of the church, and God is connecting things here, connecting things there. It makes a greater connection as people pray, as we have intercessors faithfully praying, Hallelujah, praying together, praying by themselves, praying for the Lord's people, Amen. Then we will see revival, Hallelujah. We'll see a breakthrough, Hallelujah. So praise God. So, yeah, we need to keep praying, you all. And uh, and uh, the next session will be on um, seeking the Lord. So uh, stay tuned for that. And I'll, I'll close out in prayer here. Uh, dear Lord, thank you, God, for always being so faithful. Thank you for being so good to us. Let us seek you, God, in intimacy, uh, coming to you, Lord, and, and drawing closer to you so you can draw close to us. Let us be persistent in our prayers like the persistent widow, Lord, never giving up on our prayers, believing you, God, that you will bring justice. Lord God, you are a righteous God and you will avenge. Uh, swiftly, Lord. Let us pray to the Father, God. Let us pray to you, O oh Father God, that you will bring the gifts and bring a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit as you are a good Father and you give good gifts to your children. Let us be intercessors, God, praying for one another, praying for the church, praying for our leaders, praying for revival, and crying out to you, God. Let it be so by the power of your Holy Ghost and by the blood of Jesus. Amen.